Welcome back to Discount Code Bullet. So if anyone's new here, let's just say I have sort of a mixed relationship with cars. Sort of like a love, hate, give and take, nah, just kidding. They have a special spawn help. Sorry to <clears throat> cut in like that. But this is AI spawn stitching, where I fix the fact that I did not explain what I am doing whatsoever. So what I'm doing is I'm going to use a computer to train a virtual AI to drive around a track using simulated distance sensors. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the train model and port it into an Arduino car that I build. Normally something like this is a two-part series. However, today's your lucky day. You just get one giant video. Anyway, does anyone know if duct tape puts videos back together? So in case you didn't see, a couple of videos ago, I had a project where I made this sad excuse for a car drive around the sad excuse of a track. But there's a problem with that AI. It's what I like to call a Yahtzee AI. Yahtzee! But what is a Yahtzee AI? Well, first you have to understand what a genetic algorithm is. Simply put, a genetic algorithm is a way of training an AI to do stuff by making a lot of instances of it, which we call organisms, then the computer just sees which ones do best, and kills the rest in blood, murder, pit, death, I don't know, they die. Then with this new abundance of space, the still living organisms are able to repopulate, and each offspring of an organism is slightly mutated from its parents. Some mutations are bad, which causes them to not do well so they die, and some of them are good, so they get to spread that mutation. The thing is Yahtzee, Yahtzee. AIs are different. These kinds of AIs aren't able to adapt to their environments. So this sad excuse for a car couldn't go around any other track except for this sad excuse for a track. Which just ends up having a sad excuse for an AI. What Yahtzee, Yahtzee AIs do is they just have a list of movements. So it could be like, go left, go up, go left, go left. And it just does those. However, I want my robocar to be able to go around any track. So AIs with brains generally use something called a neural network. You give it inputs and it outputs outputs and things in the middle are multiplied and added and I'm going to make a whole video about that later. But in the meantime, you can go watch this one by Code Bullet after you finish this video. I need that watch time, please. But there's one problem. I didn't really know how to make a neural network. So I journeyed to a faraway land and on top of a mountain in the middle of the mountain range, I found the great AI temple where I trained under the master of AI-ness and he was like AI spawn you must first make a basic example so I first made a square that can learn to go left or right depending on the input of direction and then the AI master was like good job AI spawn but you must now add a second dimension and I was like okay so I did that, and now I have a full two degrees of freedom. And then he was like, now you must construct something useful. And I was like, or I could not do that. And he was like, okay. And then he was like, here, this is the neat algorithm. It's pretty cool. And then I was like, cool. And then the AI master sent me on my way to grace you all with my presence and restore peace and balance to the universe. And that is definitely how it went. No tears and sleepless nights. I'm starting to think I may have made some poor life decisions over the past couple weeks. But now, it's time to build that car. Well, actually I'm gonna train it and then I'm going to apply the trained model into the robot car. So let's code that car. So when making an AI that plays a game, the most important thing to do is to first make the game. So I'm gonna start by adding in the car. Okay, now time to make it move. It goes up, it goes down, and apparently it goes left and right, and I don't think that's how cars move. So time to add in some turning. Great, and oh my god. Okay, let's fix that. Okay, so now we got a car that acts like a car. So we got a car, and now we just need a track. So for the track, I could have hard-coded it. I don't got time for that. I need a tool that was versatile, yet simple. That could, you know what, I just used Microsoft Paint. Screw it. So now we're just driving around this nice little, oh, wait, I can just drive off it. So, we need to build a wall. That can actually kill the car. Because as everyone knows, cars are people too. They can just die. 
Maybe we're just killing whoever's driver. Actually, no, let's not go there. So the way the program knows if the car is dead is if a corner of the car touches anything that is the same color as the top left pixel. So now I've given things the ability to die. How great of a person am I? And now we have to give it something to live for on the track. You'll notice there are different colors. And that just allows us to verify that it's not spinning in circles and just harvesting those points. And if it tries that, it dies. I feel like the world of AI is obsessed with death. So now the car knows what it wants, but it doesn't know how to get it, because it's quite literally driving blind. So let's give that some eyes. Hell yeah! The car can see through a method known as recasting. This is where the car sends out a bunch of lines, and the lines stop when it hits a wall, and it just returns the distance between the car and the wall. So I'm only going to show the generations where there's a significant jump in performance, just because this video is already getting very long. So as this car is going around, keep in mind it's not just doing this track, it's actually doing a variety of tracks just so we can get a generalized solution. And as you can see, it doesn't start out that well because it keeps dying, but eventually it actually manages to figure out a way to get around the track every time. And I can actually show you what the car is seeing. Anyway, now we have a trained AI, we just need the robot part of that title. So I think it's time to start building. And obviously for this project, I spared absolutely no expense on parts. We do whatever it takes to deliver the best end product. And that is an AI spawn guarantee. Which is almost as good as promising to do the opposite. For the body of the car, I needed something that was lightweight, yet sturdy. That could- you know what, I just used cardboard, I don't know what you want from me. Like, it's cardboard. Then again, as Julius Caesar once said, if you need to build a robot car, Use cardboard. I had five of the best ultrasonic sensors that money could buy. I had an Arduino. I had two motors and a motor controller. And I had a ton of cardboard. So I was ready to start planning. Psych! I don't actually plan these things. I just take all the stuff and throw it together and hope it works. Because the box was so small, I actually needed to fasten the Arduino to the top of it in order to fit the motors inside. The car went through a lot of design changes that I don't think anyone really cares about. Like, at first I was using relays, which is kind of dumb, but whatever. But I just have to say, you see this? Don't ever do this. Soldering to a live battery is stupid. Now that the motors were in place, it was time to add and wire the motor controller. And for anyone who doesn't know, a motor controller is a tiny piece of electronics that is able to regulate the speed which the wheels spin at. Then it was time to add the distance sensors, and it was during this time that I realized maybe planning ahead would have been a better idea. What I ended up doing was cutting a long hole along the front, kind of like arrow slits in old castles. And that just allowed me to have the distance sensors in the same location as the virtual sensors in the virtual car. And then I just hot glued them down, because that's what professionals do. And then it was time to wire the thing. And there are a lot of wires. It's done. Which means the only thing left to do is to crank up that copyright free action music. You know, I think I might also need a track. Okay, one more one last thing. I never actually explained how I'm getting the AI into the car. I made it so when the car trains, it's actually able to output its brain. And then I set up a Python script that can convert that brain into Arduino code. And I would go into more detail about it, but this video is getting really long and I feel like I'm about to be pulled off stage. So I think it's time to see the results. So those idiots at Tesla needed to make their own logic for their cars. like. If that wall is closer, turn to the right. If that wall is closer, turn to the left. But we don't need that here. Because we had a computer make the logic for the car. We're better than Tesla. The AI on its own figured out what turning left is, what turning right is, what going straight is, and what all the sensors mean. And that's kind of cool. And Elon Musk, if you're watching this, my car will <clears throat> drive you out of business.